Joining me to discuss Azerbaijan's military offensive in Nagorno-Karabakh is Elin Solomonov. Mr. Solomonov serves as Azerbaijan's ambassador to the United States in Washington, D.C. Mr. Ambassador, thank you so much for coming on the show. The fighting in Nagorno-Karabakh has been going on now for several weeks. How many soldiers has Azerbaijan lost so far? Thank you for inviting me. It's a pleasure to be on CBN. Uh, it's good to be among friends. Uh, we do not disclose at this moment how many people uh, were lost on the, in the military. But I can tell you that as a result of Armenian indiscriminate attacks against civilians, including the one which was done, uh, two actually attacks by SCAD ballistic missiles against the second largest city of Azerbaijan, Ganja. And those uh, type of uh, missiles and the attacks which were used by Saddam Hussein against Israel in a similar manner in the 1990s, 69 civilians have died uh, and over 240 civilians have been severely injured. Your boss, Azerbaijan's president, Ilham uh, Aliyev, uh, uh, Aliyev, insists his country will, quote, continue to drive the invaders out of our land. Why is Nagorno-Karabakh important to your nation, Mr. Ambassador? Uh, so, well, first of all, Nagorno-Karabakh and uh, the seven surrounding areas are internationally recognized parts of Azerbaijan. So this is very important to understand. There is no fighting taking place in Armenia. No fighting in Armenia. We have no military objectives on the territory of the Republic of Armenia. Everything that's happening is happening within the territorial integrity of Azerbaijan. This is an internationally recognized territory of the Republic of Azerbaijan. So this is a part of Azerbaijan that was occupied, ethnically cleansed. 800,000 people became refugees. Armenian military is there illegally. When it comes to Armenian people, however, we have no problem with Armenian people. Armenian people who live in Nagorno-Karabakh are our citizens. Azerbaijan is a diverse country. Uh, it's a country which has Christians, Muslims, and Jews living together. And Armenians live securely and safely throughout the other places in Azerbaijan. This is not against Armenian civilians, but the Armenian invading army, which is illegally in Azerbaijan, should leave. How do you respond to reports of Syrian jihadists being sent to Azerbaijan by President Erdogan? Those kind of reports are typical Soviet propaganda. I grew up in the Soviet Union. I'm very familiar with this type of propaganda. There is not a shred of evidence. Everything is a hearsay. People say these things, people say those things. There is no proof. All the photos were staged and fake. I mean, I think our Israeli friends have faced the same type of propaganda attacks on them. When it looks believable, people build on the pre-existing uh, pre uh, stereotypes. It's not true. It's simply there is no proof. Even if you listen to the reports, they're all based on second-hand information. So when, uh, when French President Emmanuel Macron uh, uh, several weeks ago uh, said that his government has evidence that uh, Syrian jihadists by the hundreds are crossing the border from Turkey going into Azerbaijan and helping uh, your country's army in the fight in the region, uh, is Mr. Macron uh, incorrect? Of course he's incorrect. Because he said that we have not presented a shred of evidence. And remember, they don't talk about this anymore. For 20 plus days, there was a fighting in Azerbaijan, on Azerbaijan's occupied territory. Not a single body or a single city or anybody else has been shown. It's Azerbaijani army which fights on its territory. And because people don't want to accept that Azerbaijani army is able to defend its homeland, people come up with this, all kinds of things. Turkey supports us directly, which is not true. Turkey is not a party to this conflict. Or, for instance, that there are some mysterious Syrians. Can you describe Azerbaijan's relationship with Israel? Yes, Azerbaijan has a very cordial, very close relationship with, uh, with our friends in Israel. Azerbaijan, you know, many people will tell you, out of the 57 member states of the Organization of Islamic Cooperation, Azerbaijan is probably the closest friend of Israel. Prime Minister Netanyahu visited Azerbaijan twice. Uh, President of Israel, late Shimon Peres, came to Azerbaijan. We have a strong uh, Jewish community, 26 years old, 2,600 years old community. Can you imagine? We have Christians, we have Muslims living together in peace. Azerbaijan is a close friend of Israel, and many would tell you that what's happening today, the Abraham Accords and other uh, positive developments, they come as a result uh, of the pioneering activity of Azerbaijan. Azerbaijan's role as a pioneer in developing the example of positive relation with Israel 
is outstanding. It's widely recognized. Mm. And I want to point out something else. There's a part of the misinformation and propaganda here is that this is about religion. This is not about religion. Azerbaijan is a good friend of Israel, a good friend of the West. It's close with Georgia. It's close with Ukraine. Both Christian countries. They unequivocally support Azerbaijan. At the same time, Armenia is, has very strong relations with Iran, which we have expressed our uh, our questions to our Iranian neighbors. They're aligned with Syria. Everything Armenia does is against uh, against what the West wants. We have very close relationship with all the Christian countries. We have Christians and Jews and Muslims living together in our country. This is not about religion. Today, mm -hmm. our military, we have Jews fighting on the side of Azerbaijan. We have Christians fighting and dying for Azerbaijan because this is their homeland. After numerous flare-ups over this particular region, this latest is the worst in decades. Is the conflict, Mr. Ambassador, different this time around, mainly because of the new weapons like drones that are being used on the battlefield? I, partially, yes, partially that. But let's, let's take things into account, that over the last several years, uh, the leaders of France, Russia, and the United States have repeatedly said that the status quo is both illegal and unsustainable. Uh, what happened was Azerbaijan has been modernizing its, modern, uh, its process. When you talk about the modernization of uh, uh, your weapon system in Azerbaijan, uh, Mr. Ambassador, do you get the bulk of your weapons uh, from Israel? We buy a lot of weapons from Israel. We buy from other countries. We buy an open market. Armenia, for instance, gets my, uh, get weapons for free from Russia, and we have raise this issue with our Russian neighbors. Why do the Armenians get all their weapons for free? Uh, we just destroyed about $2 billion worth of their equipment, and they're not supposed to have them because they don't have the money. We, on the other hand, buy on the open market, including from Israel. And we're very grateful to our friends and partners in Israel for being a great partner to us. Now, remember, precision weapons are good in terms of minimizing civilian casualties. They're targeting only and only military targets. Azerbaijan has repeatedly said, we have no intention to harm civilians. Our goal is to fight with the military, not with civilians. Hmm. Uh, Turkey's President uh, Recep Erdogan has described the fight to take back Nagorno-Karabakh as, quote, a righteous struggle. How critical is Turkey's support in this military operation? Turkey, Turkish support for Azerbaijan is much appreciated, but Turkish support is limited to political and diplomatic one. Let's not forget, Turkey is a member of the Minsk group. Russia, France, and the United States are co-chairs. But Turkey is also a member of the Minsk group. Turkey is also a member of the United Nations, uh, the United Nations organization, which means that Turkey has not said anything beyond what the Minsk group or the United Nations Security Council resolutions demand. Uh, and that's an important thing to understand. The withdrawal of Armenian troops from Azerbaijan is required not just by Turkey, not just by us. It's international law. So we appreciate it, but Turkey, we appreciate Turkish support, but Turkey is just providing us with political and diplomatic support, no military. Turkey, Turkey is not a party to this conflict. They are not directly involved. The leaders of your nation are scheduled to meet with uh, uh, our uh, Secretary of State, Mike Pompeo, at the end of this week. Uh, what are you hoping will come out of this meeting? Uh, thank you. Yes, indeed, we're planning the visit by the foreign minister here to Washington. Uh, what we want to have is a resumption of the substantive talks based on international law, along with the proposals elaborated by the Minsk Group. We appreciate the U.S. role as a, as a Minsk Group co-chair, as a co-mediator, and I think the United States should put pressure on Armenia uh, to actually sit down and talk. That's all we want. We want to continue the peace talks. Mr. Ambassador, thank you so much for coming on the broadcast. Appreciate your time. My pleasure. Thank you.